Father, we thank you and we praise you. We truly love, honor, and adore you. We thank you, Father, for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Father, for your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that rules and reign in our lives and in this service today. Father, we thank you, Father, for your presence. Father, for your presence is what we need the most, Father. For you said that you are God that ever abide in us and move through us, that you never leave us nor forsake us, but will be with us even till the end. And Father, we are so thankful that we're never alone and we're never without. For our sufficiency is not of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of you who makes us able ministers of the gospel. Not according to the letter, but according to the spirit. So Father, we forever give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give God a hand clap of praise, a shout of victory. A voice of triumph. Come on now. Yeah, I want to hear the women yell out. Yeah. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Yeah, I heard y'all yelling out about that meeting. And so I want to, amen, hear the women yell out. Yeah. You know, women are more voiceful than men, so amen. It is. It is what it is. You know, I, I, I tell, you know, me and my wife, we do marital counsel and, and premarital counsel and stuff like that. And, and I deal with the men a lot of time. And, and I say, you know, because they say the wives this and this. I said, it ain't just your wife, that's women. Amen. I said, first of all, you got to understand that a woman's mouth is her strength. You can't ever, as a man, out talk a woman. <laughs> and you can't win an argument by talking. Because she will let stuff come out of her mouth. I said, a woman can make a man feel like he's Superman, can run through a wall, or feel like it ain't worth getting out of bed. <laughs> Just with her mouth. Yes. You was created to lift him up and to strengthen him in times of weakness. And then if you was created to do that, you can also tear him down. Because if you have the ability to build, you also have the ability to destroy. Go ahead. I'm just. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. First, I want to just thank God and for the opportunity, Pastor Nick and Pastor Franny, for allowing me and my wife the opportunity to come and be a part of what God is doing here at this ministry and in this city. And, and I declare, decree, and proclaim that the best is yet still to come. Amen. Yes, yes. And, and I, I want you to walk in great expectation for something supernatural to be manifested in your lives because of your connection. I think so many times we uh, don't value it enough. And, and let me say this also, that the name means something, Life Transforming Ministry. The, uh, you know, whenever God... Uh, get ready to do something tremendous and more specifically different, he makes sure that the name represents what he's going to do. Always. Abram to Abraham. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Saul to Paul. He always, he, he, he does that intentionally. And, and you are here because God wants your life to be transformed. And not only your life to be transformed, he's going to use your life to transform others. Amen. You got to understand that. And so that's why it's so significant and important that you come here ready, willing, and able to change. Yes. 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 You know, I think that uh, that should be uh, the desire and the uh I guess the aim for every believer when they go to church, but for so many people going to church, it's not about their changes, it's about using or getting ammunition to use on other folks. Yeah, yeah. It is. Let me get a word that I can share with somebody else because I don't need it. 
And, and I want us to never lose sight or never lose focus or never lose the urge and the desire to change and to be better. And that's the reason you come to church, to experience a newness and something greater in God that will transform your life to be better. Amen. Excellence is always getting better no matter what stage you are at. Excellent excelling, not staying the same. Amen? Amen? So I'm excited. If you don't know, you better ask somebody. <laughs> I'm excited. I am, and, and uh, hopefully you um, receive a word for your life today that will make your life better. Uh, I was talking to the leadership on yesterday, and I shared with them that it doesn't matter how um, joyous you get during the midst of the message or how excited you get by hearing something that tingle your flesh or your fancy. It means more about the change that takes place after I go. After we leave that, that, that us coming was a benefit not only to this ministry but to the kingdom of God because your life was impacted. And if that doesn't happen then Amen. <laughs> you know, I, 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 amen. You know, pa <laughs> Pastor Nick was, you know, preaching and teaching on exclusively Jesus and nothing more and nothing less. And, and you know, I want to try to not preach, con you know, on that, but add to uh, a concept that will give more. Uh, uh, ammunition for what he has been uh, directed by God to do for you. Um, so I want to talk about the fruits of the Spirit. And the reason I want to talk about the fruits of the Spirit because I really believe that um, we as the body of Christ have to have a clear understanding of the process of change that takes place in our lives and what it really looked like and how we manifest that change or how it manifests itself in our lives. And I'm here to really uh, tell you that uh, the fruits of the Spirit is the essence of the life of God in you. The fruits of the Spirit. Uh, when, when you think about the fruits of the Spirit, then you think about, you know, Matthew 12 and 33 when it says, for the tree is known by its fruit. And that means that, you know, you can call it a peach tree, you can call it an apple tree, you can call it a plum tree, but whatever fruit comes out, that's what it is. Amen. <laughs> that's what it is. And I think sometimes we call ourselves Christian, we call ourselves Christ-like, we call ourselves believers, we call ourselves faith people, we call ourselves a lot of things until the trueness come out. Oh, yeah. Amen. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I want us to realize and understand uh, the process of the fruits of the Spirit. We want to start in Galatians chapter 5 because, um, again, it start listing. And when we talk about the fruit of the Spirit, we're not talking about multi-fruit. It's singular. It's one fruit with different parts. One fruit with different parts. So when you have the fruit, you have all of them but you have them in different degrees and each one produced the next one. And, and that's what I really want to try to get us to embrace is that sometimes we think, believe, or feel like we are lacking one aspect of the fruits of the spirit. And so we try to go to one to gain another one. But if you go back to the first aspect of the fruit, love. Love produce every other one. And we want to talk about that. Galatians 5 and 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Against such there is no law. When we embrace and begin to produce the fruits of the Spirit, I, I promise you, there's nothing that the world can present 
and bring to you that the fruits of the Spirit can't conquer. Did you get that? That, that? There's no limitation. There's no restriction. There's no boundaries. There's no barriers that you cannot master, conquer, and win with the fruits of the Spirit. You know, when, when, again, when Pastor Nick talked about exclusively Jesus, you know, we as believers in times past, you know, we used to make these statements, less of me and more of you. None of me and all of you. What do that look like? When we, when we talk about less of me, because the problem is never... The seed of God being in you is that you have not developed the seed of God to be more than what you used to be. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye how? By the re of the mind. See, this is the thing. See, we see the cross, the altar is a place of exchange. That means that we got to die so that he can live. We got to decrease so that he can increase. We got to be less so he can be more. And how do we do that? By understanding, learning, growing. That's why you come to church. You come to church so that you can get a greater, better understanding, so that you can change your way of thinking, so you can change your old way of mindset, so that now God, the Bible says where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. It's not the liberty for you to keep doing what you want to do. It's the liberty for him to have his way in you. And and this is the thing. The potence of the, 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 the potential, the potence of God is the pureness of God. That means the, the, the purest he is in you, the greater the manifestation and the works that works in you. Any portion of yourself weaken the potentness of God. And we got to understand that. So, so what we're trying to do, and, and let me say this because I know how we get sometimes. We sometimes as believers think that we've arrived, we've attained, we've gotten there. But let me tell you this. You're never going to get all that God has because God has no end. Yes. Yes. Wow. How can you get all of something that has no end? He never runs out and he never is less than, more than enough. So that means, you know, I am often quote uh, uh, Queen Latif when she did a commencement uh, uh, a message at a uh, college. And at the end, she says, never stop learning. That's someone to quote, never stop learning. As believers, we have to never stop learning. When you come here, you don't come here to hear something new. You come here to learn something new. Not just hear it, but to learn it, to grow into it. That's why you have to be open for change. You have to be open. And and, and again, the change that is evidenced in your life is represented by the fruit of the spirit. All you got to do is just, just begin to dissect it and, and, and again, you begin to understand how it applies to you. You know, in Proverbs 20 and 11 it says, even a child is known by its doing. Whether he, his work is pure or whether it be right. And the reason I say that is because when you look at the fruits of the spirit again, and we're going to look at them again, love, joy, and peace. Long-suffering. Another word for that word, long-suffering, is patient. Patient. Long-suffering or patient. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Another word for temperance is self-control. So that means it starts with love and it ends with self-control. Because if you don't have self-control, who has control? Yield your body to the Spirit of God because if you don't yield your body to the Spirit of God, 
He said, whoever you yield your body to be a servant of, that's who you are the servant of, whether good or evil. And I think that that's the thing that we don't sometimes understand is that this is a free moral desire that we choose to yield so that we can become meek for the master's use, so that we can be an instrument of righteousness, meek for the master's use. You've got to position yourself, but if you're not in control, you know, one of my mantras, you know, if people's situations and circumstances got that much influence over your life, it's because God don't have enough. Mm -hmm. If people's situations and circumstances has that much influence over your life, if they are affecting you, it's because God's influence is not affecting you more. Amen. Did you get that? Yes, sir. And that's something that we, so, so when I'm out of control, it's because God is not in control. That's why the first three is what makes me more of who I am than anything. Love, joy, and peace. The first three are in me. The middle three is on me. And the last three is through me. In me, on me, and through me. The first three is what I know and God know me to be. The middle three is what others see on me and the last three is how I deliver what God has given me for others. And, and I think that that's the thing that we don't understand. And when we think about the love, this is not how much you love God. Because our love cannot measure, cannot produce the magnitude of what we need to walk in. But God's love for us does. For God so loved the world, he Get his only begotten son. The Bible says that if he gave his only son, what would he withhold from us if he gave his son? That's, that's, so this is the agape love, that love 26. It's that unconditional love. It's not something based on what you do or don't do. It's based on who he is and how much he loves you. That should bring the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. Amen. Huh? When I think about the goodness, when I think about how God loves me, when I think about what God has done for me, while I was yet a sinner, he sent his son to die for me. You know, every one of us have experiences where we didn't deserve it. We didn't do nothing for it. We probably should have got something much worse, but God stepped in and intervened on our behalf because he loved us like that. And I've always thought, if God can do that without my participation, what can he do if I help him a little bit? Yeah. If I just line up a little bit more, if I just get, become just a little bit more obedient than I was, how much more would I have received or how much more could I receive from God? That makes me joyous. Amen. So again, so knowing that God loves you, should produce joy, which should bring strength to your life. And the strength and the joy of God should bring peace, which is a stability. And again, when, 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 when all chaos is all around you, peace be still. What manner of man is this that even a wind and a rain Peace be still. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Why? Because I know God loves me. And if God be for me, who or what can be against me? I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand the, the, how the fruits of the Spirit operate because the Bible talks about in this world you're going to have tribulation. Amen. Think it not strange when you find yourself falling into diverse temptation that some strange thing that's come upon you. Those that live godly shall suffer persecution. See, we want to live this tiptoe through the tulip. No, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. And this is not something to cause fear. This is something to say that even in the midst, because, listen, we're praying that the world will change, but the world ain't changing for the better. The world's going to get worse. Amen. 
But while the world gets worse, we should get better, and then we become the salt, the light, and the very expression of God's love to mankind. If I be lifted up, I am who I am because of who he is in me. And if people begin to, I, I listen to the praise song and, 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 you know, all I want is, come on, lift it up. Come on. See, see? That, that's what he wants. He wants to be lifted up in us so that people are drawn, not to us, but to him. Yes. To him. Yes. But that ain't ha- that, that doesn't happen when, when, when we are just as fearful as everybody else. That doesn't happen when we look like we've been sucking on a lemon like everybody else. That doesn't happen when we are shaking with everything like everybody else. Amen. So now we got the first three, love, joy, and peace. And then here come the long suffering. Because you're going to have some. But let patience have a perfect work so that you can be complete in time, wanting nothing. See, patient or long suffering is a, is a stretcher. It, 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 it's, it, it, it's expand your capacity. To receive. Mm-hmm. It expands your capacity to be more. You know, when, when God created man, God's intent was always to grow man into what he desired them to be. But man had no patience. It wasn't that. Why would God put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden if he didn't want man eventually to be a partaker of it. He just didn't want man to be a partaker of it so quick. It's just like your children. You want your children to enjoy a lot of things, but you want them to enjoy at the rate of their maturity and development and not be exposed to it too quick that they don't know what to do with it. Anything abused would be misused. And that's the thing when it came to, to, to man. God wanted man to grow, to learn, to develop. He's teaching man to be like him. Yeah. That's what he's trying to do to us now. Again, exclusively Jesus. When you look at, at, at Jesus, look at Romans chapter 8. Verse 26 says, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmity, our weakness, our shortcoming. That means that wherever we lack in, he come and fill our lack. When he came into us, he was the self-sufficient of Christ's sufficiency. That means needing no outside source. Not needing any outside aid or source because I have the fullness of what I need living on the inside of me. It says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself pray, make his intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that such as the heart knows what is in the mind of the Spirit because he makes his intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together to the good for them that love God and to them who are the call according to his purpose. Now here we go. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son that we might be the firstborn of men. He wants us to be in the image of his son. What didn't Jesus do? He did it all. 
What was he defeated in? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. The grave didn't defeat him. Death didn't defeat him. Hell didn't keep him. None of that. And all these things we are more than conqueror through him. I want us to understand that. See, that's why we shouldn't fear what the world or what man can do. For greater is he that lives in us than he that lives in the world. You know, I, I think I talked to the leadership on yesterday and I said, you know, when Jesus walked the earth, he walked in the fullness of the spirit of God. Jesus did no miracles until he was baptized and the heaven opened up and the spirit of God fell on him as like the form of a dove. And the heaven says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And he went about doing good and healing the sick and doing many miracles after that. And then he said, it's more speedier than I go than stay. Because if I don't go, he won't send another comforter. You know why he can't send another comforter? Because the comforter in the fullness is living in me. Why? Because I needed to have the fullness of the spirit in order to conquer every temptation that man would ever deal with and to defeat every problem that man would ever have. I needed the fullness of them. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to disperse him into the body now. Now you're going to get a little piece. You're going to get a little piece. And when we bring them together, we have the full piece with Jesus being the head. Say, come on now. Now, now I don't know what your head do for you, but my head leaves me. I do nothing without my head Giving me instruction. My hand, my feet, my arm, my leg, none of my body can move without the function of my head. Now, I don't know about you. Maybe you do things and say, it's the devil that made me do it. The devil didn't make you do it. Your head thought about it. You reason it. Then you decide it and you act on it. Now it's time to let God lead you and guide you exclusively. Amen. I'm just. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. To be conforming to the image of his son, that we might be the firstborn among men and brothers. Moreover, when he did predestine them, he also called, and whom he called them, he also justified, and whom he justified them, he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I, I want us to embrace that, 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 that the whole desire of God is to develop us to walk, to be, to think, to move, to act just like Jesus. Amen. And the representation of that is the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. It's the fruit of the Spirit. In me, on me, through me. About me for me, and about others. What God knows, what others see, and what I do. Who I am, what I have, and what they need. Come on now, I'm, I'm trying to get you to embrace this concept that, now, don't get it twisted. Every aspect of the fruits of the Spirit is represented in every level of growth. That means when God is dealing with you, he's dealing with you not just on love, joy, and peace. He's dealing with you love, joy, and peace, and all the rest of the fruits of the Spirit. But the base of who you are has to be rooted and grounded and founded on love, joy, and peace. And then he wants to anoint you or equip you are gifted you with purpose to live. Don't ever think that God wants to use you without you being the beneficiary first of who you are. I think it's, I, I, I share with people, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty much known for ministries of health, servanthood, but I tell people, I says, I don't serve out of a need to get. I serve out of the appreciation of what I got. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
Did you get that? I am grateful for what God has equipped me, prepared me, and placed on me to do. So I serve out of the fullness of appreciation and gratitude that God has made me who I am. And and, and I think that if you do that, then you will understand. You will understand that now, when God has equipped me, now is my time to sow that same appreciation, to show how great and awesome my God is. Paul was a perfect example. Paul said, I was a chief sinner. He said, the reason I go at it so hard is because if God can save me, he can save anybody. There's hope for everybody. See, when you know what God has done for you, yeah. in me and on me, or in me and for me, that it makes you want to share it to others. It makes you want to share it to others. And again, uh, I want to put the emphasis on the love of God because it all stemmed from recognizing, realizing, understanding how much God loves you. Most of us are defeated in that first aspect of love. Nobody knows. <laughs> my, my wife don't like me singing that song. The trouble I feel. But when you understand that God loves you so much, that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, that God loves you so much, that he'll be with you even to the end, that God loves you so much, that whatever lack or insufficiency you may have, God said, I'm more than enough to fill the gap. Yes. So you say you can't talk. All you got to do is let me use you and I'll talk for you. You say you're not smart enough or educated enough to be in front of people. And God said, but I will use you to make an example of the greatness of me in spite of the lack in you. So you say, they say that you're a little slow in learning and can't grasp things too quickly. I'm going to take the foolishness of the world and, and confound the wise. I do my best, this is God talking, I do my best work when it's less of you and more of me. People begin to recognize that it must be a difference about who they are because I know how they was. You got to get to the point that you start realizing that love that God has for you. Because God says, you know, when, when, when God was restoring and doing it. Not that God didn't know what was going to happen, but he wanted to make sure that we understood he knew. He said, a commandment I give to you, love your neighbor even as you love yourself. And then he knew that wasn't going to work because <laughs> some of you don't even like yourself. So how are you going to love your neighbor when you don't like yourself? So Jesus came in John 13 with a new commandment. He said, a new commandment I give unto you, John 13 and 34, he said that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciple if you love one another. As I love you is the emphasis, as I love you. See, that's the thing. How patient is God with your not head <laughs> a, a precious self <laughs> how many times did he have to put up with your promises that you broke but yet he still didn't throw you away yeah. or cash you out yeah. but how quick are we see that's the thing you can't have patience or long suffering see that's what patience and long suffering should bring to you a gentleness, that's the next one, for others. See, you can't be compassionate for somebody that 
that, that is going through something when you haven't been compassionate for what you've gone through. But see, when you suffer long and have to develop some patience, then when you see somebody else going through, you have some gentleness, some compassion. You, 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 you're not as coarse and hard as you used to be. Now there's a softness about you. And then that softness and compassion brings about a goodness. That's that next part. That goodness on you and you want to do something about it. And then God said, now it's time to use your faith. Faith is good for you. Always. You're going to always need faith to produce change in you. But Sometimes your faith, confession, work against your receptiveness of is already done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Because now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And why do a man hope for that which he see or what he has or what he's already received? You know, if I receive divine health, then I don't need faith to hope for it. I receive it as so. Amen. But when I'm being an instrument of righteousness, meet for the master's use, and God needs me to intervene and to step on the behalf and to help somebody less, then God said, use your faith. Call those things that be not as though they were. Come on now. Begin to declare their future into their present. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not. You don't see it, but call it so. They don't see it, but call it so. Nobody see it, but call it so. And watch what happened. God began to use you. You become that instrument. God become the, be, and because God began to use you, see, a lot of people don't realize, now I need that next one to kick in. Meekness so that I don't get the big head. Amen. <laughs> huh? After goodness come faith, and after faith come meekness. Meekness says it's a humility. It's a humbleness. It's, it's not I, but Christ in me, the hope of glory, the hope of the manifested presence of God. I am who I am because of he that lives in me. Not, nothing, not me, but him. See, that's, that's why Philippians 4.13 has always been my stand on to scripture. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I'm, I'm going to read that one in the Amplifier. You know it. <laughs> Philippians 4.13 in the Amplifier said, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Now you can get the big head if you don't know who Christ in you is and think it's just you. Yeah. Lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. Mm -hmm. Speak deliverance. My question to the leadership yesterday and my question to the believers and the body of Christ is, why is it we farther along in, and the works I do shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father? Why isn't the body of Christ doing more of the manifested glory of God on this earth than we are? It's because we don't know how to manifest, develop, and grow to be the very essence of who he wants us to be represented in the fruits of the Spirit. If you do too much, we get the big head. Look at me. I am. 
somebody. <laughs> I might not be there to you, but I know who I am. I am somebody. See, listen, it doesn't matter about what people think about me. It matters more about what people think about him. Yes. And if they can see and, and, and think highly of him because of who he is in me, if I be lifted up, I draw all men. And then we get to the last one, temperance, self-control. Because when we are under the authority of the Spirit of God in self-control, it brings out such a unlimited access for God to do the exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according. See, if we leave out the, the, the last part, according to the power that worketh in us. If you know anything about electricity, what is power in this light is not the ultimate source of the power that power these light. It has to be contained, controlled. That's a breaker box because too much power would blow the light. See, an out of control Christian would be not a blessing to the body of Christ, but a detriment to the kingdom. Because you'd be life and death is in the power of your tongue. If he released the power he wants to release in your words, you're tickling me to he can't do that until you are temperance self-control to know the importance of what comes out of my mouth and being humble enough to say God you are in control you have the liberty to speak and I obey I, I really believe that that's what God once. I, I want to look at real quickly and then now this message is was I did it in a 12 part series we're not going to do 12 parts today <laughs> but one of the things that I, I wanted to, to do because sometimes we learn in the polar opposite of um what God wants. Uh, sometimes you, your kids learn not by the words that you speak, but by the experience of bumping their head. Uh, I used to suck these two fingers until I burnt them. And that kept them out of my mouth. Uh, sometimes we have to, not that that's the best way, not that that's what God real is, but Sometimes we have to learn through experience. And sometimes we learn in the natural, sometimes better when we go through things than just hearing things. And that's why we got to get so intent in coming to church to hear, to learn, to grow, to change, so that we don't have to experience those experiences that makes us change. But I want to give you Satan fruits. And Satan does it in a reverse order. Satan fruits, reverse order of Satan fruit is out of control of lasciviousness. The next one he deal with is pride. Fear. Selfishness. Being mean. Anxious or careful. Troubled, sadness, and the one he really wants more than anything is loneliness and hopelessness. If I can isolate them and feel, get them to feel lonely and hopeless, I got them. That's the reverse order of love, joy, peace. Long-suffering, 
gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance in reverse order. So when you find yourself in any of those other fruit, go back to God truly, really love me. Now, I don't know about you. I'm finna end, but I don't know about you, but this, this is my confession. I'm God's favorite child. Amen. If he don't do it for nobody else, he will always do it for me. Amen. You know why? Because he loves me. Oh, listen, I don't know how you feel and what you think, but God, I know God loved me. I know he loved me. I know he loved me more than anything. More than it. He loved me. And there's no length, no depth, no width, no extension that he won't go. I want to read that scripture and we're going to call it a home run. Okay, Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to start at verse... 14. It says, For this cause I bow my knee unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant unto you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with the might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him. Now because of that, because of knowing the width, the depth, the length, the height of God's love for you. Now unto him that is able to do it seemingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Drop the mic. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 So if you don't get anything else out of the message, all you have to do is remember the fruits of the Spirit and work on God loves me. God loves. When you come to church, you come into church to learn the characteristics and the tendency of God. And God doesn't have love. God is love. And what the world needs more now is love. Not any kind of love, but God kind of love. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you and we praise you. We love, honor, and adore you. We thank you, Father, for this time, this season, this day, this hour, this word. Father, we thank you that the gospel, the good news, is the message of your love for all mankind. Not, not partiality, not racism, not any of those things that can separate the love that you have for each individual. And the love you have for each individual is not at the expense of the love you have for every individual. You are so full of love that you can love us all with the full intensity and nobody lack anything. We're not in competition. We're not competing. So we shouldn't compare and we dare not complain. So, Father, let us receive that love in the fullness that you give, unconditionally, without restriction, to the full, to the overflow. We thank you for it right now. Say, I believe I receive I believe I receive. the love of God, love of God. For, me, for me this day. This day. God, loves me God loves me to the fullness, to the fullness. and he will not, he will not. restrain anything that is for my good. So I receive the fullness of his presence living 
and abiding in me, on me, and working through me so that others can be changed also. Amen. Now give God a hand clap of praise. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen.